All right, this is Chris Guzman, Bolo Punch Boxing Hour. I've got on the phone right now Merciless Mike Malo. He's 19-1 and one with 12 knockouts. He's fighting Andrew Galata this Saturday night, Madison Square Garden in New York, on the undercard of Roy Jones, Felix Trinidad. Mike, how you doing tonight, man? Good, doing real good. Uh, you had some uh, public workouts tonight. How'd that go? Uh, real good. It was, uh, it was pretty short. You know, we just did a couple rounds, uh, you know, some, some jump ropes, shadow boxes, little pads. You know, it's just, just something for the press. It was nice. So all the work that uh, that you have leading up to this fight, it's been done already, I would assume. Uh, everything's in the bank, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I got to ask you, uh, is this your biggest challenge yet? Now, now let, let's put this in perspective. Uh, this is the man who was ahead on the scorecards twice against Riddick Bowe. And personally, I think he deserved the decision against Chris Bird when he got a draw. And he really hurt uh, John Ruiz. He knocked him down twice, but then he went and lost the decision. Is this your biggest challenge to date? Oh, sure. Yeah, I, I believe so. It would be my biggest win, no doubt. Um, Andrew's a great fighter, like you said. We're about the Chris Bird and Ruiz. I agree with you 100%. We all seen what he did to Riddick Bowe. And, you know, so a lot of time has passed since then. I, I understand that, but the way he looked against McBride, Everyone's saying that he's, he looks really, really uh, impressive, you know. And I mean, he was moving, he was uh, moving real good. He was throwing combinations, and he got McBride out of there, you know. And uh, I just, I, I'm really looking forward to uh, Saturday night, man. And I think it's going to be a great show, you know, just with, with my style, his style. I mean, it's going to, it's going to be great. Speaking of McBride, I saw this other guy from Chicago uh, knock the mess out of him a little while back. Uh, that was you, I think, actually. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> in two rounds. Yeah, you did better than than Galata did against him, actually. Yeah, I had him down three times, and uh, I had him down once at the end of the first round, and then twice in the first forty seconds of the second round. Uh, th that was actually the second time I had, I had ever seen you fight. I saw you at the Cicero Stadium uh, back in '05, and you were you were tearing him up back then too. Yeah, I fought Rogerio Lobo that night for the for a Latin title. That was beautiful. Uh, i got to get back to Galata for a second. Uh, Galata's been quoted at saying that you don't even belong in the same ring as him. Uh, he actually, he gives different interviews. If you speak English to him, he gives a very kind interview. If, if you get an interview off the net translator from Polish, he's just absolutely slamming you. Um, what, what do you have to say to, to people that think you might be in over your head? Well, everyone thought I was in over my head against McBride. You know, six foot six, two hundred and eighty pounds. You know, some kid, some some nobody from Chicago getting in the ring. You know, everyone was treating me like an opponent. Everyone, you know, and look, look what happened. You know, we we train real hard. I'm learning every day in the gym with my trainer, uh, Mike Garcia, and we're, we're we're working real hard. And you know, Andrew slamming me and putting the Polish interviews. You know, maybe you want to keep his fan base and keep everyone. I was Polish fan locked in that that he's that he's coming to win. You know, which I'm sure he is. He's coming to fight. I know he is. This is his last hurrah, and uh, he needs to get it done. But, you know, I, I don't see it happening through me. I also got to ask, uh, what's it like being on a stage like Jones Trinidad? I mean, you've you've had some, some great success being on the undercards of some, uh, some world title bouts here in Chicago, you know, the last couple of years. But this is Madison Square Garden. This is the absolute big time. This is the mecca. What's it like being on the stage with uh, Jones and Trinidad? Oh, it's going to be awesome, man. I'm on the fight on the undercard of two living legends. <laughs> you know, Roy Jones, the eight-time world champion. I think uh, Felix is a five-time world champion. <laughs> and it was, I mean, you know, the 13 world titles between the two of them, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, being at Madison Square Garden, man, we're going back uh, how many years? You know, <laughs> you know Ray Robinson, Jake Lamar, Rocky Marciano, the list goes on and on. And oh, on, yeah. You know? And, uh, Man, it's just, it's a, truly, it's an honor to, to do this. I, I thought, I was, if I got fuck a lot, I, I thought for sure it'd be in Chicago, you know. But, I mean, Madison Square Garden, man, <laughs> like you said, it's the Mecca of Boxing. This is, this is a great stage to be on for, for me, for my corner, for my whole, my management team, for all of us. It's just a great, it's just great. Well, for two big heavyweights from Chicago, you would think the natural choice would be for you to fight in Chicago. But um, do you kind of prefer it the way it's playing out, that you get to be on the, this giant stage? Yeah, you know, I think it'd be a, uh, a great experience for me, you know. Uh, so, you know, the, the next, the, for the glory, for the next place I'm going to be in, you know, what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say? So Absolutely. you, you, you got to start somewhere, and this is the best place, this is, this is it, you know. And I, I just... 
real excited about it, man. And, uh, and yeah, I would love to have it in Chicago. Of course, my hometown. I love fighting there, but you, know, you, you, you got to leave the nest sometime. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of Jones Trinidad, how do you see that fight playing out? Uh, both of them on layoffs. Uh, Tito on a really long layoff, and uh, Tito's moving way up in weight too. You know, you, like I said, there's 13 world titles between the two of them. So uh, how do you see it playing? I mean, these guys know us uh, know so much about boxing. And they got so much skill, you know. It, who knows? It all depends on their more on their mind. That you know, it it uh, yeah. Roy Jones been talking to me a lot, and, and uh, I'd, I'd like to see the best man win, you know. But we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's hard to pin you down on anything, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, I don't want to say. I like both. They're both they're both great guys. And, you this this is a little off the subject but uh, i'm part of this uh, fantasy boxing prediction league called uh, boxing today i was hoping you could help me out here with a little inside information uh what round should i pick for you to knock uh, galata out on saturday night uh, I, don't, uh, I don't like predicting you know what, what rounds i'm gonna knock a fight uh, <laughs> so i'm gonna go boxing okay that's the best i can do you know but uh Fair enough, fair enough. No. Well, well, let's say this. Going off my history, you know, I mean, it was kind of speak for itself, if you know what I'm trying to say. Well, I'm not pulling. Well, I mean, you get to make the decision of a knockout or a decision. I'm definitely not picking a decision on this fight at all. Right. <laughs> uh, Mike, I know uh, a lot of people are pulling for you to become a major force in the heavyweight division, not the least of which uh, the Bull of Punch Boxing Hour here. Uh, what do you want to say to all your fans in Chicago and all your fans around the world, actually? I want to tell everybody in Chicago, I love them, man. Thank you for all the support and all, all the, the, you know, everything that's getting behind me. And uh, and uh, I'm going to bring a victory home to Chicago, I promise. And uh, I'm going to fight my heart. I'm going to lay it all out there. I'm going to lay it all out there. I'm going to bring it home. And uh, I'm just really excited about it. And I hope everyone that, that, came, that, that can't make it to New York, I hope you all tune in and watch it on HBO. It's going to be great. And uh, looking for, just look, really looking forward to it. And I hope everyone back home is, too. Uh, well, we will definitely be uh, be tuning in, beer in hand, and uh, we'll be looking to uh, we'll be looking to meet up with you back in Chicago when you get back after knocking this big guy out. It sounds great, man. Thank uh, you. All right, dude. We'll talk to you real soon, Mike Mala. We love Mike Mala. Great interview. Hell of a fighter. Yeah, he always comes on, no matter no matter when we ask him. No. He came right before his fight. I just fights here in a couple days, and he came on. Uh, Wait and see. Let him get a belt. Let him get a belt and watch everyone trying to scramble to get him in there. He's an exciting U.S. fighter here. Oh, my God. He's exceptional. His power is crazy. And he's totally right when he says he was brought in against Kevin McBride as an opponent. No one thought he was going to win. No. There weren't even odds on that fight as far as I know. But Kevin McBride had, he had beaten Mike Tyson. They wanted him to be a big deal. And his height was a big deal. That's about it. Well, now this fight is going to prove, he, he basically wants to prove it as that he's saying that the, there's not actually a belt on the line, but he's saying it's for the Chicago belt. Yeah. Him and Galata, because he already beat uh, Pinkowski, who was the other big heavyweight in the area. So he's going to, he says he's going to take the Chicago belt now, even though, I mean, the fight's not taking place in Chicago, but it's two Chicago weight guys. Yeah. And they, uh, they talk a lot in the gym and stuff. He says, uh, he says Galata actually talks a lot of trash to him. Well, Galata has been to the dance. If if ever there was a time when a fighter could sit back and talk trash, it was it's Galata because he's been there. He's done it. He's uh, he's got a very short fuse though. Uh, he he has been known to quit. He has been known to self destruct. Uh, he's been in really prime positions to do well, and he and he drops the ball. He comes up short. And then other times when he deserves to win, he's not even getting the decisions when he does deserve to win. So. God bless him for just putting the gloves on. Have I, can I ever say I've been bored with a Galata fight? Hell no. 
I love watching the live fight, whether it's for one round or, or 12 rounds. It's going to be exciting, yeah, one way or another. Edge of your feet, or on your edge of your feet. Edge of your feet. <laughs> it puts you on your tiptoes. <laughs> but both of us basically right. picked Malo here for early knockout. Yeah, three and four. No. And let's get on to the Jones and Trinidad fight, the main event. Are they fighting too? <laughs> Roy Jones Jr. fighting Felix Tito Trinidad. Most interesting matchup. Uh, it makes a little more sense to this fight if it would have happened about five years ago. That's when we could say, okay, this is really for all the marbles. Um, it, it, what, what, is this, what does this fight really mean? Um, and what would you, what would you, I was a coach of Nestor. It actually means both of these guys get a little bit more dough in their pocket, basically. Uh, as far as the grand scheme of the sport, does this mean anything? It's maybe a setup fight for Jones to maybe get a chance at, at another light heavyweight. He, talk, he talked a little bit of game about Kelzaghi, maybe trying to get Kelzaghi in there. You, you're talking big picture, though. And uh, The fight itself, on its own, does that fight mean anything? It does. Uh, do, is anyone, is it gonna do has much? anyone really sat around all these years and said, what if Jones works with fought Trinity? Well, I'll tell you right now. Nobody it, thought about it because there were such different weight classes. It was one fight away from happening, and that's something no one's talking about. All Trinidad had to do was the impossible that night. He he won the middleweight um, tournament with the exception of one fight. He, he got up, and it, it came time for him to fight uh, Bernard Hopkins. If, Bern, if he had beaten Bernard Hopkins, it would have been a logical choice for his next fight or, or second to next fight, the, the, you know, two more fights. He'd have fought Roy Jones. Yeah. It would have happened. Trinidad was on a rampage right there. He was beating everyone he was going up against, and he was knocking them out. He was doing an exceptionally good job at it, too. And as Jones said a couple of weeks ago on ESPN, they were talking about him maybe fighting Hopkins. And he said that he, he gave up on that fight. He's tried setting the fight up with Hopkins numerous times, and he doesn't think that fight will ever go through. He, he, at first, he, he said he was asking for a lot of money, but he was the big name there. Jones was the big name there. He said then as slowly as Hopkins built himself up, he offered Hopkins more money, and it still didn't happen. So he, he's given up on that fight. He's getting the same thing with Tarver. Both of those guys he's basically given up on. I'll tell you right now, I don't need to see Jones Tarver again. I don't need to see Jones Hopkins, really. Jones Calzaghi, different story. I could sit through that. Yeah, I could sit through anything Calzaghi. Anybody Calzaghi wants to look up on, basically. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be pleased watching. I'm gonna be sad. What, what Jones are we gonna see though? We're gonna see the Jones of, of before where he was. That was on his back up. in two hours. Yeah, or the Jones that was on his back. I mean, if, if we see an old washed up Roy Jones, nobody wants to see that. It I mean, could also be an old washed up Felix Trinidad. Yeah, because he Trinidad two years. And when he did fight, it was Trinidad fighting Winky Wright, looking very sluggish, very slow. And it brought Winky to the top. That fight brought him up because Winky said. He goes, he has nothing. He just has a jab. He fights fight straight forward. Trinidad, and he Trinidad had nothing to win that fight. He should have never fought Winky Wright. He said, it, that comes right with my style. It, Trinidad has no chance to beat me. And as we see in that fight, Joan, or, uh, Winky Wright looked really good in that fight. This would almost be like, to make an MMA parallel, if Royce Gracie were to fight Dan Sutter. With bragging rights. Today. That's all I see here is bragging rights. I beat you. It's not. Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. However, neither of us were on our best day on the day that it happened. It's the same reason that Bone Crusher Smith, you know, it, granted it, at this point it was six, seven years ago, but he fought Larry Holmes. Why? It was part of the Legends Tour. It, it, it meant nothing. It was bragging rights, but. It's not even a what if because Bone Crusher and Holmes had already fought once and Bone Crusher lost. Yeah, the same These thing. These guys so. have never fought each other. So it, it's exciting to say, well, we finally get the chance for it. And I'll tell you what, that first round is going to be damn exciting. I'm going to be really excited. I'll be drunk, but I'll be excited. And the same thing happened with uh, Foreman and what, what's the uh, Irish guy? Cooney. Cooney. That happened both in late. Cooney was on a comeback. Uh, uh, Cooney was out of came back from retirement. And Foreman was on his major comeback, on his way back up to the championship again. Um, problem was, Foreman was exceptionally serious about fighting, and Cooney, God bless him, I don't know, I don't really know what that was about. Yeah, and it kind of has the same feeling here. 
I don't know why. I don't really know why Trinidad's coming back. You know he has to have money in the bank. I don't no, know why. Is, I don't. We we interview a lot of fighters, Chris, especially a lot of the older fighters at the Boxing Hall of Fame. And one of the questions you always ask them: Who would you like to fight? You know, in your career, if you go back, and this is one of those. I wanted to fight that guy. It didn't happen. I'm still able to fight. Let's let's do it. You know, it doesn't mean a lot, but it's the guy you want to beat. At least you won't ever have to say what if. Yeah. That's the big positive that I see. Yeah. But I'm still, win, win, lose, or draw, I'm going to sit here and say, what if they had fought five years ago? Yeah, that's exactly how I was just going to say that. That's, that's, what, that's what would have mattered here. I mean, I'm glad it's happening. It's just like we're going to always say, what if if uh, Mayweather and, and uh, Mosley would have fought you know, five years ago, even if they do end up fighting in the future? Well, what's a parallel from real life that happened you know, 20 years ago? Well... Uh, Aaron the Hawk Pryor really wanted a fight with Sugar Ray Leonard. Leonard never gave him that shot, and um, subsequently, I mean, it has nothing to do with it, but subsequently, um, Aaron Pryor turned to a life of drugs. You know, it hasn't, it's not like one thing caused the other, but then there was a quick decline, and there was no possibility of that fight happening. But they were, and I wouldn't say they were both in their prime at the same time, but it would have been. Leonard was closer to his prime than Pryor was, but Pryor still wanted that fight really bad. And Leonard kind of at the end of his career did a lot, a lot of what De La Hoya is doing now. Kind of just come back once a year for a fight, you know, not not fighting. Fighting Hearns again. Yeah. When that fight didn't matter all that much, it's still a very exciting fight, but it didn't matter the way their first fight. Yeah. So I mean, hey. does Jones versus Trinidad matter? Not really. Not really How that much unless Trinidad wins. Well, it could become something. It, it, no matter who wins, it could become something more for the winner. Because you know Calzaghe sitting front row for this. Yeah. Saying, oh, man, I don't care who wins. I'm fighting him. I'll but fight the winner. There's definitely a paycheck there for Jones if he if he can get in there with Calzaghe. I mean, Calzaghe will earn a paycheck as well. If, he, if Jones said he'll go overseas now as well to fight sure. Calzaghe. So. Well, he's not the champion, and he recognizes that. Yeah. He says, I'm not, I'm not going to be the champion and then go to someone else's backyard and lose a close decision, I lose my belt. Yeah. I'm the champion. But now he's not the champion. He recognized the fact, well, I have to go. Yeah. I'll make that trip. Darius Mikoshewski, thanks you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually picking, uh, what was my pick on this? Unanimous decision, Jones. Unanimous Jones. And now uh, I have the same thing. It's yeah, hard so to go I. away from that. I think uh, most people on the message board are going to be going with that. It's pretty, pretty straightforward pick. But uh, you do end up picking Trinidad and he pulls it off, you're going to gain a lot of points on it. And if you're in Vegas, you'll actually win a lot of money if you yeah. picture it. Yeah, I didn't actually look up the odds on this, but Jones is a pretty strong favorite. Should we go straight into fighter you should know? Uh, let's take a quick break. Just we'll take a real quick break. We'll come right back with Len Harvey, a 2008 inductee. He's about to be inducted in June at the International Boxing Hall of Fame, Canada Store, New York. We'll be right back with our boxing uh, little tidbit that we always do with fighter you should know. This is your Bowling Punch Boxing Hour, brought to you by George Rogie Insurance www.hssp.cc sportsjuice.com. 